Hello, my friends, and welcome to Prog Chattery 777. We're talking about Jethro Tull. We've made it almost to the end of the 70s, and we've made it to this one. Heavy Horses. Very highly regarded album, uh, and for very good reason. It is a, it is a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant Jethro Tull record. Uh, the second installment of the so-called folk trilogy. I have no idea if uh, Ian Anderson consciously, you know, sat down and said, I'm going to write a trilogy of albums. But, uh, you know, those albums, which are Songs from the Wood, Heavy Horses, and Stormwatch, they do fit together very nicely, both lyrically and, uh, for the most part, musically, like I said. Um, lyrically, the three albums are kind of dealing with... Uh, environmental issues kind of thing. Um, the way I see it, Songs from the Wood is the uh, the discovery of nature. You know, he had just moved out to the country, and it, it's a celebration of uh, how nature works and how the whole uh, system is, um, you know, generally can, can function in harmony. And uh, Heavy Horses is a little bit darker. Um, there's a few more references to uh, town life, you know, as well as uh, country life. It's more of a farming album, actually. I look at Songs from the Wood as being, you know, a forest album. This is a an agricultural album, but still, it's still set, you know, it still has a rural feel, you know, small town feel. Um, and then, of course, Stormwatch is, is basically singing about, you know, environmental catastrophe. This is, this is that perfect balance in the middle where we still have that celebration of nature, but, you know, there's like a storm, there's a storm brewing on the horizon. Um... And the, the, the last song on the album kind of leads the way for that. Um, yeah, I love, I love the, the the whole album cover. Actually, is really, really good. That's a very famous, uh, famous uh, picture of Ian Anderson with his Clydesdales. I'm not sure if they're actually his, but uh, beautiful horses, and they would weigh quite a lot, I should think. Uh, and then this was just might be my favorite band shot ever. I just, I just love this image of the band. All in there, all in their tuxedos in the clubhouse, sipping on brandy or something. <laughs> quite, uh, quite a classy bunch. Um, and yeah, we, we get uh, we we get the same lineup that we've had in the previous album. So we have uh, Barry Barlow on the drums, Ian Anderson on uh, guitar, vocals, and flute. Uh, John Evan on on piano. He'd been there for a while at this point. Uh, John Glasscock on bass, who replaced Jeffrey Hammond Hammond after Minstrel in the Gallery. Uh, Martin Barr, of course, the uh, ever-present rollicking guitar player. And David Palmer, who uh, was on, you know, he, he featured, uh, his, his arrangements, his orchestral arrangements were featured on every Tell album up to this point, but after Songs from the Wood, he officially joined as a member. And, uh, and the band is on fire, I mean... It, like I said, musically, it is related to Songs from the Wood, and we get that kind of gentle giantiness uh, that musical jigsaw saw in a lot of the pieces, uh, which is which is fantastic. Like, and it goes to show, you, even though they, they're called the folk albums, I mean, it's still it's still very much you know proggy tall, not not to the same extent as like a thick as a brick, but um, you know, it, it, there, there, there's lots of engaging musical arrangements that'll. Uh, tickle the ears of anyone with a musical brain. Um, it's funny, the, the, I think the, the actual folky songs on here, I mentioned uh, I mentioned before on Songs from the Wood, we get kind of the extended epic with uh, Cap and Hand, the song for Bach. Um, I always think, I don't think I pronounced that right. Uh, there's two epics on this, on this album, and uh, the, remain, the remaining songs are probably closer to, you know, traditional folk music than the stuff on Songs from the Wood. Um, like I said, like songs like Cup of Wonder, Hunting Girl, Songs from the Wood Itself, um, you know, they, they don't, of course there is that folky melody, that Celtic melody thing going on, but they're still kind of hard rocking, there's still, um, you know, there's still a, a rock energy to it. The folky songs on this one are, are probably closer to traditional folk, I think, um, but they're all very, very good. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, <clears throat> let's crack on into the tracks, shall we? Uh, side one opens with "And the Mouse Police Never Sleeps," one of my favorites on the album. Actually, I, it's a, it's just one of the more you know kind of traditional folk songs. Um, it's got a really cool cyclical guitar pattern that. 
And uh, it's all about Barry Barlow's drums, really. I mean, the, the way that uh, he syncopates that kind of bouncy guitar pattern, um, the way that uh, Barrymore, Barrymore's drumming goes around that, it really it, it, it creates a very, very interesting uh, arrangement for the song. Um, and it's a song about a cat, uh, the noble the noble farm cat who, uh, you know, killing mice and eats but one in every ten. Um, thoughts of mice and apple pie. <laughs> you know, again, it's, it's got that country house kind of a kind of feeling to it. Um, sure, there, there's some really cool, uh, you know, of course there's some cool flute playing on it. I I, I love the very very beginning. I like you hear the sound of a cat purr. Boom ding ding Very very good. Uh, the end, uh, the end is really cool too. The mouse, please, never sleeps. The mouse, please. And they have two of those going, and the again, it shows the cyclical uh, nature of the arrangement. Um, fantastic. Notable is, is Anderson's voice is, is definitely a little raspier on this album. I've talked before. I mean, obviously, I really, really like Anderson's voice, and I think his, his voice, particularly in the mid '70s and the mid '80s, uh, was fantastic, and. Uh, you know, ultimately he didn't he didn't have the, the the right vocal training and whatnot, so I think he put his voice through the ringer, and it sounds like his vocals are pretty tired on this album. I mean, mind you, he's been touring for the entirety of the '70s, singing every night, singing for the you know recordings, and uh, I think when he sang this one, I mean, his voice does sound a little raspier in general. It doesn't have the same roller coaster kind of feeling that uh, it did on like Passion Play or Minstrel in the Gallery, but it's I, I like the raspiness. It uh, you know, maybe, maybe he did it on purpose because that raspy vocal fits the music on the album. And it does fit very, very nicely. Uh, but yeah, anyway, track two. Uh, after the Mouse Police Never Sleeps, we got Acres Wild. Now this this is, uh, again, it, it it's typical of that uh, kind of celtic -y folk style that Anderson was developing and, you know, pretty well mastered by the time he got to this. You know, the previous, the previous Tall Folk was, you know, Kind of interesting guitar arrangements with a with a you know a cool melody. Now he was he was looking more to the traditional stuff, and that started uh, started with songs from the wood. You could even trace it back to Salamander, on um, too old to rock and roll. But Acres Wild is really good. Again, we're, we're lyrically we're seeing a little more talk about um, the town end of things, um, as opposed to the to like the forest end of things. Uh, but again, really, really good arrangement. Really good arrangement. Um, I love the little guitar shots, like boom, boom. Yeah, you, you know what I'm talking about. They kind of, they kind of pop in at an awkward moment, but it's still, you know, the rhythms. It's still rhythmically sound. It still all, all flows through. Some great acoustic guitar playing. I love that. Doom, do 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 Great drum performance by uh, Barry Barlow as well. I mean, this band was absolutely on fire at this point. Uh, I mean, like I said, they're they're playing some pretty complicated stuff, but I mean, they they execute it with ease. It doesn't sound complicated because they're playing it so effectively, uh, and they're being very resourceful with their with their skills. Uh, so then it makes us uh, it sends us to track three, which is No Lullaby. Uh, I think this this could be the classic of the album. This is the first epic, the first extended epic. Um, again, it's one of one of those great Martin Barr showcases where he can really he gets to. He gets to do his thing. Um, yeah, I, I, the, I love I love the there's some great drum fills in there by uh, Barlow too. <laughs> really great drumming, and they, they, that that might be the song. Uh, no lullaby might be the song that makes me think of Barry Barlow. I mean, he, he was. He, he may not he may not quite have been at, at Bruford's level, but I mean he was he was right at the door, if not there. Love those fills in that. And um, of course the orchestral arrangement during that uh, that verse, you know, that break your eyes open. And I, I love the or the orchestra there. Very atmospheric verses and uh, the the song, you know, it winds its way into some you know, very rollicking high high energy rock like i said they're called folk albums but they're, they're, there's just as much hard rocking tall on here than, than as there ever was um i think the arrangements have just become better you know he's he's, he's had you know almost 10 years experience over 10 years experience writing these songs so 
So yeah, he's just they're they're just getting really really good, and the band is really tight. Blah 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 blah. Um, no lullaby, no lullaby is notable too for uh, it was the opener for a lot of the concerts, um, and I'm I'm not gonna talk about um, bursting out just yet. I, I think I will. You know, send me send me a request if you really really want to hear me talk about bursting out. If you comment and and uh, tell me to do it, then I will. How's that sound? Um, so yeah, moving on. Track four, side one, is Moths. Uh, this this one, I, I guess, I, is the one that I kind of had a, a few reservations about. Uh, this is where I, it, the album it, it's a bit it's a bit melancholy, a bit dreary. Um, but there's some great embellishments and great arrangements to it. Uh, uh, you know, when the when the verse is going and the and the the melody is going, you know, it, it does kind of have that you know gray gray skies feeling about it, but, uh, uh like the ending, like, pop, stuff like that, it, it's, it's, that, that's an example of those really complex arrangements that are just being performed so well by such a great band that you, you, you don't really appreciate just how tricky some of that stuff is to pull off, but, uh, yeah, really well done, but overall, I mean, the song is, uh, it's good, obviously. Um, but it's, 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 it's one of the weaker points on the album for me, but it's only three minutes, it doesn't overstay its welcome. Uh, then we move into track five of Side One, uh, Side One closes with Journeyman. This is one of my favorite songs on the album, actually, uh, you know, miles away from folk, really, let's be honest, I mean, th th this is, this, this isn't really, um, the folky kind of a thing. Maybe, maybe some of the melodies in, uh, uh, near the chorus, but for the most part, I mean, it, it's, it's just a really funky groove. And, uh, you know, a funky, funky bass line, so obviously Barry Barlow takes full advantage of that, and he plays some phenomenal drum parts. I, I think I think the, the Folk Trilogy is the highlight of Barry Barlow's playing in Tull, I think. Uh, he was just right on fire. Um... I love the, the chorus is fantastic. Journey man, night tripping on the late fantastic. And then when it just, you know, when it goes back into that hook, when that groove comes in, it's so good. It's, it's, it's I, I think it's an underplayed song by Tall, actually. Probably definitely underappreciated. I love Journey Man. Um, and uh, it, it's about being on a train. It's, uh, um, you know, Stuck on a platform, waiting to get home. Uh, station master, in all his wisdom, decided to turn the heating off. That's one of the lines that's in there. Uh, dreaming about his slippers, waiting at home, flip flop. It's great, great, uh, great imagery in these lyrics. Again, it's it's a little bit dreary. That's probably true of the whole album. It 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 doesn't necessarily have that same lightness or sense of humor, but it doesn't detract from the album. I mean, you know, his albums don't always have to be, you know, filled with humor and silliness. I mean, you know, he, he could be, he could be, he could be serious as well and still put out a really, really good piece of work. So, yeah, Journeyman, great song about a guy on a train. I love it. We flip the record over and we get Side 2, which opens with Rover. This one reminds me the most of Songs from the Wood, actually. Uh, it had, again, with that jigsaw puzzle arrangement. Um... I really, really like Rover. I love, I love the introduction, and I love that middle section. That din 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 din. And I mean, that's just one line. I and mean, I said it's a musical jigsaw, so there's all kinds of little, you know, bits and pieces, bits of percussion that pop in there. Um, and the song chugs along. This again, the song is, uh, it's, the song itself isn't one of my favorites on the on the album, but I, I just love that arrangement and. Uh, like I said, that, that middle section in the intro, uh, it reminds me of Songs from the Wood. It feels foresty to me, more than some of the other songs on the, on this. So yeah, Rover, Rover gets a thumbs up. They all get thumbs up, I know. I know, I should be more critical, but I'm not. Uh, track two, track two, side two, is One Brown Mouse. This, this is a, could be one of my favorites on the album. Uh, this is, this is actually that moment of lightness, actually. Um. Uh, May not be as humorous or as witty, but uh, the melody is just such a joy, isn't it? It, it is just an absolute joyous piece, um, just bursting with uh, with happiness and optimi optimism. Um, even though it's talking about a brown mouse sitting in a cage, I just uh, I just love that. One brown mouse sitting in a cage. 
change. That, that's what I mean about the, the those Ian Anderson melodies. I mean, he knows just when to, you know, bring the melody back up or bring it back down. I mean, he's 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 just got such a great ear for for creating those, you know, lovely little bits. Um. And yeah, the lyrics do have that optimism, don't they? Um, you know, take a look at my ever open book. Uh, yeah, it, it's 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 a wonderful wonderful little piece, and a highlight of the album, and one that I think should be played more. Yeah, it's it's a classic. Uh, then track three of side two, we get the title track. This is the second epic of the album, and oh, if if you're if you're an animal lover or a horse lover. Um, there's no way the title track won't uh, won't get you right there. Uh, it's a it's a, it is a very sad song, really. But it, I mean, again, it is it is an epic. It's you know it's eight minutes long. Um, there, there's just so many great sections, and it, it the the lyrics deal with um, you know he's he's talking about the passage of time and how and how you know technology moves on, and uh, the lyric is about the relationship between the agriculturalist and his working horses, uh, you know, and they're, they're the noble steed that makes sure that uh, he gets his, his day's work done. And, uh, you know, the sadness comes from the fact that, you know, the, the tractor has come and that, that beautiful bond between the farmer and his horses is, and his working horses is, is you know, that, that bond is going to be gone forever thanks to, te thanks to the technology. So you have, it, it, is, it, is, it is kind of a heartbreaker, really. Um, you know, and uh, a song about the relentlessness of technology and how, you know, moving forward means that we're always going to, we're going to, we're going to lose things as well. Uh, in this case, it's the relationship with the horses. Uh, but it's also a celebration of the horses as well, you know. Uh, oh, heavy horses moved the land under me, and the, the experience of riding the horses. You know, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting all soft just thinking about it. It, it is, a, it is a beautiful piece. Um, and like I said, it, it's probably one of the proggier songs on the album. Like I said, there's two epics: No Lullaby and, and Heavy Horses. And uh, even though it does have all of the proggy arrangements, I mean, there's different sections to it. There's kind, of, there's the big fast section. Doom, 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 doom. Uh, that part comes in, but, you know, in spite of all those complex arrangements, it really is an emotional song, and it really, you know, all, all of those, all of the, the flurry of notes that you get in the eight minutes that uh, the song plays, it, each note, you know, serves a purpose in, uh, in conjuring up those feelings in you, and, uh, yeah, it is, it is a beautiful piece. Um, it's funny. There's a thing I have where it may not be my favorite song on the album, but I know it's the best one. I know I know it's the most accomplished piece of music, um, and it you know it gets me every time. <laughs> Lovely piece. Uh, and then after this this massive dose of wonderful epicness and uh, loveliness is over, we get Weathercock. Uh, this this is another contender for the great classic on the album. I love I love Weathercock. I think it's brilliant. Um, it's it's basically it, it's about what I said before. It, it's kind of it, it to me. It's about a, a storm brewing. Um, uh, it's talking about the weathercock. You know, the, the chicken that you see up on a uh, on a farm that indicates where where the wind is blowing, what direction the wind is blowing. And uh, yeah, storms are brewing. That that's the feeling that I always got from uh, weathercock. And it's appropriate because weathercock kind of leads us into the third album of the trilogy, Stormwatch. Um, so yeah, lyrically, it's, it's all quite appropriate that way. But uh, musically, again, it, we, we get, we get that, that kind of Celtic march, um, and it's, it, it, it is fantastic! It is quintessential Ian Anderson sound, and it, it, it's all a part of, it's all a part of the thing that makes these three albums kind of the, the start of Tull as we know them. Um, you know, the, these, these three albums are probably, they're more famous to fans the folk trilogy is, is famous to fans, but not casual fans. You know what I mean? And I think um, the folk trilogy, Songs from the Wood, Heavy Horses, and uh, Stormwatch, have contributed to what makes Tall what they are. I think I think there, there's something more defining about these albums than there is about you know Aqualung or Thick as a Brick. Um, so yeah, that's what I think about that. Um, 
the middle section of, of Weathercock is really, really good too. That and there's a few kind of tricky arrangements uh, in there as well. Uh, at the very end, that that march, that march kind of comes back at the end as well, and uh, they just kind of they just they they resyncopate one of the verses, and we get there's a big descending guitar line uh, from Martin Barr. We get that down down down. Do, 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 do. You know what I'm talking about. You know, you know, right at the end when the when the guitar part comes in, and, yeah, it's really good, isn't it? I thought so. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I've been I've been rambling too long about Heavy Horses. Uh, certainly, certainly one of the great Tall albums. Um, yeah, you know, I've I've often wondered of the folk trilogy, what's my favorite, Songs from the Wood or Heavy Horses? To again, it totally depends on my mood. Um, I said songs from the wood has got uh, the optimism factor but I mean this is there's something very real about this album and uh, you know it's also it's also very beautiful there's there's some there's some really really great moments to it so there it is heavy horses I hope you enjoyed my chat send me a, a like a subscribe throw some comments in the box below down there and um, yeah, we will uh, talk to you next time where I'm going to be wrapping up the Folk Trilogy. We're going to be talking about Stormwatch. And then from there, we're into the 80s! My goodness. So stay tuned for all that. Thanks, for, thanks again for listening, and we will see you later. Okay. Hmm.